what is going on so we're gonna make a little video today on how to measure your car uh, one of my son's friends that drifts his car had a little accident with it and uh, he's concerned that the strut tower might not be in the uh, proper location so we're gonna go over today and look at a few tools that you can use to uh, see if your front ends square or straight however you want to say we have a tram gauge laid out in the engine compartment there and then you can also use a simple tape measure so I'm going to try to do this with one hand. I don't have a camera stand, so if it's a little shaky, I do apologize right up front, but you'll get the gist of it. Now, I did offer to loan my uh, tram gauge out. You can use a tram gauge. You can use a tape measure. You get about the same results. Uh, we're not going to record any numbers here. We're just going to verify that the front end is square on this car. Uh, the way you do this, uh, most late model cars will have a series of holes in the frame and you know a lot of people think the holes are random but you see this hole right here and there's another hole exactly like it on the other side these are more than likely build holes or the car was on the jig as it went down the line a lot of times the car is on a fixture and they build the car off of the main floor of the car they put the floor down and then they stack everything on top of it these holes are uh, also in the bottom of the car and in the top of the car and when we use an electronic measuring system, such as a, you know, a shark or a chart or you know, one of the, the top measuring systems, we hang targets out of these and a laser goes under the car and hits the targets. And it'll tell us how far the frame rail swayed over, back, forward, side to side. And that's how you get your uh, measurements before you pull the frame to repair it. Uh, before we had electronic measurements, we used to use what they call a tram gauge. Uh, Probably if you work at a, you know, a higher end body shop and you mention a tram gauge, your boss will tell you that's something that you ride at Disney World. Uh, you know, they don't use these in shops anymore. Most cars are always electronically measured and repaired within two millimeters of the factory specs is the OEM standard. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the uh, bolt locations to uh, see if this front end square. Now the bolts we're going to use in the front of the car will be right here. Uh, they're on each side of the radiator support. If you have a 240, these are very good holes to use because they're in the factory location and they're exactly the same on both sides of the car. The other holes or bolts you can use or reference would be the light bolts. The two light bolts are on the same side and they're in the same location right to left. So we'll go ahead and use the core support bolt and the part in question is the strut tower. So we'll use this back bolt for a reference. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this pin on this bolt and we're gonna drop this pin on this bolt. Well, one-handed, it's tough. So there you go, you can see we're on that bolt, we're on that bolt, and we're square. So now what we're gonna do is take the same measurement on the other side of the car and we should get a perfect X here. If the car's never been introduced to the guardrail or the wall. Bear with me here. Left-handed too. So. so there you go. You're on the bolt there. We're on the bolt there. That tells us that both these strut towers are in the proper location. Now you can do this with a tape measure, obviously. You're just trying to make sure that you know that tower hasn't moved. So when you bolt the strut in, you get a you know a good alignment. The other measurements that we're gonna be concerned with when we align the car. Uh, a lot of people know about the uh, the three general measurements. We have camber, which is the angle of the uh, tire and the relationship at the top of the fender, how it sits. It'll be like this or like this, cambered out, cambered in. And then we have caster, and that's the location of the strut in relationship to the uh, strut tower. Uh, negative cander, the, uh, the uh, caster, the strut would be towards the back straight up and down American cars like to do straight up and down and most of the uh, foreign cars like a little bit of front angle on the uh, caster there and that's factory set you can't really adjust that uh, so we have camber we have caster and then we have toe which is a a measurement of where the wheels at and that's an adjustment that you adjust with your tie rod so Toe is probably what most people are uh, familiar with. Set the toe and let it go is the term that you hear a lot in the alignment business. Now I am certified in front end and alignment 
in ICAR, so I've had a little experience in this. I used to do all the alignments at the body shop I worked at and did a lot of front end repairs. The other number or, or uh, measurement that a lot of people don't know about is SIA, and that's Steering Increment Angle Accurment. And what that is is when you run the wheel through its sweep, the camber and the caster actually change a little bit from the factory. Now if your SRA or SIA is off, it's going to be your knuckles bent. This is usually the only piece that will affect that is the knuckle or the hub. Uh, normally, you know, you've already replaced the uh, coilover or strut or the low con lower control arm is usually visually you can obviously look at a control arm or a strut and tell if it's damaged. A lot of times this knuckle won't show any damage and the only place you'll see that is on an alignment machine when you do the SIA measurement. Steering increment accurate. So those are the basics on making sure that your strut tower is in the proper location. Uh, the tram gauge of course is easily duplicated with a tape measure. Uh, you know, it's a little more floppy, but it's the same principle. You're just measuring the uh, bolt location, the bolt location, and you want to have an X. You want to have the same measurement from bolt hole to bolt hole from side to side. And that should give you a square uh, front end. You should be able to bolt your strut in there and have confidence that you'll be able to take it and get it aligned. So that's a couple ways that you can measure it. Those are a couple of uh, things you need to look out for. And I hope that helps somebody out. And like I said, if anybody needs to borrow the tram gauge, you're more than welcome to come and get it and borrow it. And if you need me to come over and measure the car, I'd be glad to do it for you. You can also measure ball joint locations on the bottom of the car using the pickup holes on the bottom of the frame rail. Uh, it's another one of these holes that I'm talking about. Uh, you'll see them on the bottom of the car. Basically, the car rides on them down the assembly line. So this car is getting a little bit closer. I haven't done an update on this, but uh, let me get this off his car before he sees it. But uh, he's been working on this quite a bit. Uh, I think he's fabbing a breather box for back there. He's getting ready to weld up. He made it out of cardboard. I think he got all his wiring done on the motor. He's waiting for the uh, ECU. He's got a standalone engine management system for this. And then my favorite part of the build. We got the uh, switch panel all done. We got a cool shifter bottle here, ball. He's got the uh, cage welded in, so looking pretty good. And uh, got the race pack all hooked up. That's looking, oof, that's bright. But he's got that all hooked up. So we got a few more sensors to buy, some G meters, uh, some different things he's having to weld on the uh, engine for the sensors. And uh, everything's pretty much hot and ready to go. This is the uh, switch out of the Nova because he bought a cheap switch and it didn't work out. Here it is down here on the floor. These don't work out too well. So, yeah, some sort of a circuit breaker or inertia switch. This thing's all tricked out on the wire. I'll show you some of it under there. Don't know if that'll come out. There's one of the computers. I really don't know what that does, but it does something. He's got it all labeled. <clears throat> and he's going to uh, be wiring a Nova soon, I hope. Soon. So I don't know if any of you have kids that watch my channel. I think a lot of you do. And uh, I try to stay as involved as I can with my son and his projects. Sometimes he gets messy and we have words. He, uh, made up this contract for me the other day. You guys can pause that if you want. But uh, yeah, he wants to rent 205 square foot. And this is an agreement that he wrote up he wants me to sign. And he wants to install some plugs for different welders and stuff and some fluorescent lights. And in return, he's gonna, you know, do some fabrication work for me. I had to laugh when I saw that, but but that's what's going on here. Not a lot. We cleaned up the shop a little on this side and uh, got rid of all Hans's engines. One of his friends is supposed to pick those up. They're outside right now. And he built this table for uh, welding. He's going to put a steel top on that, build a welding table out of it. 
It was one of his little puke cans he built there. I told him it was too small, so he's uh, doing something a little nicer, a little bigger. That'd be good for an aspirated car, but not too good for a boosted car. But uh, that's what's going on there. Uh, still working on the old 73 here. Got the uh, door skin welded back on the other day. And then I ran into a little rust at the bottom of the... Uh, yeah, the foot well there and ended up having to cut the whole rocker out, weld in the whole heater channel and there's a bucket of nuts there. But that's what's going on. Haven't done a whole lot to the Pontiac. Uh, getting ready for Neil. Neil's coming back from England. I'm going to set this down so I don't scare you guys. i got to get away from the camera. Oh, Snikes. Here we go. Anyway, here we go. It's a little crooked, but, you know. Neil's coming back from England. He's getting married. He uh, met Marcy at the uh, party we had over in Daytona there when he came from uh, England and stayed here for a couple weeks. Uh, he met a lady, one of Andrea's friends, and uh, they've, you know, had quite the relationship, and they've been corresponding back and forth. Marcy's gone to uh, London a couple times to visit. And uh, they're going to get married here soon, uh, I think during bike week. Uh, it wasn't planned, they just did that, so there's no hotel rooms. Uh, there's a few people coming uh, from the garage, and uh, Ken's coming from California from what I understand, and uh, Scott in Florida, Scott and Ziggy, so it's going to be good to see them, and uh, I think they're going to stay here, and I'm sure Neil will probably stay here in the uh, Newmar Hilton. And uh, that's about what's going on. We're going to be in a wedding. So I'll be sure to video that. We're going to live stream it so Neil's parents can watch it. But uh, yeah, it's funny how that works. Uh, how you find somebody that you weren't expecting to find and uh, you end up getting married. So Neil has been trying to call me and uh, you know he wants me to be his best man at his wedding. And I'll be glad to do that. And uh, hopefully this video puts a little... Uh, a few people at ease, you know, they were worried about me missing. So, uh, I've been taking care of some uh, personal things I needed to really take care of, and uh, that took a little while. And uh, I'm going to be getting back on this garage here. I haven't been out here for a month or two. But uh, I'm going to buy some lights here, clean this place up, brighten it up a little bit. And I need to really consolidate and get some space is the main problem. I have nowhere to keep anything because there's so many cars in here right now. Uh, been working on the Mustang, have that out front, getting ready to put a steering rack in that today. And uh, bought a few other things to bolt on it. And then one of Hans's friends is going to tune it for me. And uh, I think we're going to change that over from automatic to a stick. That's coming up. And uh, yeah, still working on the Nova. The Nova's, uh, I've wired you know pretty much what I want to wire I don't want the car to be uh, you know how, how can I say it you know wiring is not my strong point you know I can I can get by with it but my son's very good at it and I really want him to wire it for me I uh, had to order a race pack for this and some sensors so I'm going to replace all the gauges in this we're just going to go with one race pack unit because it'll do the uh, Speedometer, it'll do all the functions that I don't have. I can do the speedometer by GPS. And uh, well, I just think they're pretty cool. And Hans gets a pretty good deal being that he works with them a lot. So we're going to put a race pack on this, and we're also going to put a race pack and a data acquisition system on the uh, drag car. So uh, that stuff will be coming up. Uh, looking forward to this year. I want to race my car a little bit. I haven't uh, done that yet. It's still back there sitting collecting dust, but we're going to bolt that back together and take that out to the track soon. I met a few people in the uh, Deland area that go to the track. And uh, they've motivated me to, uh, you know, maybe go to the track a little bit this year and uh, hang out at some of the car meets, put my Mustang back together. And uh, if you want to check out their channel, uh, they're local here in town and they have a great YouTube channel. It's called uh, Mustang Lifestyle. Go check them out, uh, Andrew, Ash, and Scott, and uh, they make great videos, and they definitely motivated me to take the Mustang out of the backyard and, uh, you know, have some fun with it. Uh, 
they do all kinds of different videos and if you're looking for some content to look at that might be a good place to start over there they put a video up about every week and uh what can you say about youtube the uh the young crowd in youtube has taken over the youtube scene and uh it's amazing how smart some of these uh younger people are but uh that's just how it is it just just shows that the car uh, hobby is going to be healthy for a while so that's what's going on here i was glad to see everybody i'm glad everybody stopped by to say hi and uh i'm going to try to get back on a regular video schedule here i know uh you know i haven't been doing very good on the videos but sometimes you got to take a break and uh, i'm not going to stop making videos i just need a little time off before we get started with what's coming up this year so i promise that uh I'll get back to making the videos. Thanks for hanging around. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. Uh, you know, I can't say thank you enough to the YouTube community. Uh, all the support I get from you guys when I don't make videos, I get phone calls and emails, and you know, it's it's pretty cool the way uh, YouTube works, at least for me. So, I hope the measuring video helps uh, some people out. Like I said, if you need any help measuring your car, I'd be more than glad to go help you do it. Uh, I have no problem with that. No charge. I'll ride out to wherever I gotta go. We'll crawl under that and make sure everything's nice and square and you can align the car and be safe to drive it and crash it again. So uh, hopefully that helped you and uh, hopefully everybody's doing good out there. And uh, we'll see some of you guys here shortly. And uh, it's gonna be good. We'll have a little party, I guess. Uh, Neil wants to do a few things. And uh, yeah, so that's coming up. And uh, I'm going to be going out to California. Ken's coming from California, and I'll be going to California here soon. Got a little video to do out there. That's coming up. And, uh, yeah, so that's what's happening. Hope you guys are caught up. I'm rambling around, so or rambling on. So uh, rambling around, that's another channel you should check out. But uh, now I'm babbling, so it's time for me to push the stop button. And time for you guys to watch another video, maybe from somebody else. Uh, Thanks again for checking in. Thanks again for watching the videos. Thank you for subscribing and growing the channel. It means a lot to me, and uh, I do appreciate it.